you're over 50 or received an initial booster dose at least four months ago. Find a vaccination site by calling 651-304-9986 or visit vaccineconnector.mn.gov. This message brought to you by the Native American Community Clinic. We are your relatives. We are your relations. Brothers. Sisters. Sons. Daughters. And, and some, some of us are your grandchildren. We are your community. Historically, we held places of honor and respect. Because of the impact of colonization, some of us are rejected, thrown out from family, friends, and community, set up as targets for sexual violence, sex trafficked, humiliated, tortured, and murdered. Everybody has the right to be safe. We are your relatives. Remember, homophobia, homophobia is not traditional. Sponsored by the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. Minnesota has the only original wolf population in the continental United States, and 80% of Minnesotans believe the wolf should be protected. Howling for Wolves is asking Minnesotans to respect our true wildlife manager, the wolf. Their survival is critical to our ecosystems, our communities, and even our economy. As highly intelligent animals with strong social bonds, Minnesota wolves deserve to be protected and admired. Learn more at howlingforwolves.org. Let's live and let howl. Hey, Olgama, I've been hearing a lot about this term, climate justice. What is that? Climate justice is recognizing that the negative impacts of climate change don't affect all people equally. It also means transitioning from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more sustainable future. MN350 is one of the groups that's pushing for this transition to protect our futures. You can even get involved, too. That's great, especially since I'm concerned about pipeline projects like Line 3. How can I help MN350? Just find them on Facebook or visit mn350.org. Ramsey County's Transforming Systems Together initiative is rethinking how the county delivers services and invests in the community, including through grants. Grants are available to support individuals and organizations providing prevention services and serving vulnerable youth involved in child protection and foster care. To learn more and see if you or your organization qualifies, visit RamseyCounty.us slash TST grants. Applications are due by September 30th. With your AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for partly cloudy skies tonight with a low around 58, Wednesday partly sunny with a high near 81, and Thursday partly sunny with a high around 85. Cruder's Supper Club is a little piece of old school nightlife in the 21st century. And before or after your show, check out the new Maggie's Lounge, a perfect spot to visit with friends. It's open Wednesdays through Sundays, 4.30 to 11 for cocktails and light fare. And you don't even need a ticket to enjoy the great atmosphere of Maggie's or at crudersmn.com. Portions of Native Roots Radio may be pre-recorded. It's a good day to be indigenous. Get up, stand up. They are going to become more brutal. Cody Cook, Henny Cook, Because up, all the hippies are trying to be Indians anyway. They are going to become more repressive. Because it's a matter of dollars and their illusionary concepts of power. Hey, Victor. We must live in balance with the earth. And also recent happenings at Wounded Knee. I am awake. Welcome to Native Roots Radio Presents I'm Awake, and I'm your host, Wakanja Hade. Hey, Karagi, to all my friends and relatives in four directions, you are listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents I'm Awake all over Turtle Island here. We're on civic media, and we talk about, you know, Native issues, and Native issues are human issues, and human issues are Native issues. We're going to be doing a little something different today. We usually do Rock the Vote Native style, but it's going to be Native Ritz Radio Presents the Year of the Dog, and we have uh, John Proudstar on, and we are so excited to switch it up a little bit. Uh, Peeny Gigi for spending some time with us, John. And John, uh, I, I would love to read your bio, um, and I'm going to do that. You know, uh, you're a Native American, you're a veteran actor of 43 films, including this recent acclaimed performance in Leon's FX hit series, Reservation Dogs. We love that. We've had many people, uh, uh, many of the stars on Reservation Dogs on our show. And so we're blessed to have you on. And you're going to be in the final uh, on Wednesday, September 28th. Uh, you know, you're also in this movie that we're going to be talking about. And I really want to get deep into the movie, but I can't help. But first, say, uh, Peeny Gigi, I mean, thank you and welcome for being on our show. And I have to ask you a few things about Reservation Dogs before we get into your into your movie, The Year of the Dogs. So, Peeny Gigi, John, for being on. I think you're muted, John. I'm muted? Can you hear me? Here you yeah, I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay. So, thank you, and I'm honored to be here. <laughs> 
So, so uh, you know, one of the things I want to just say is that uh, talk about Reservation Dogs real quick. And one of my favorite shows was with uh, you and Willie Jack going hunting and um, kind of getting emotional thinking about that. But um, that's part of Reservation Dogs is the heart, the humor, uh, the you know, the native inside jokes. Um, how was that shooting that episode last year? My goodness. Uh, it was scary because so much depended on it. Um, Disney was very worried about it because it changed the flow of the, the show. And it was just myself and Willie Jack. We had to hold the show ourselves. So a lot of people were concerned whether it was going to be good or not. And uh, when we shot it, I mean, I knew it was going to be good because of the heart behind it. And where the story came from you know one of the writers it's it's a piece of their life and they were there watching us do this you know story and kind of interpret their life um but it was amazing because getting to work with paulina you know we had just met um so you know we everyone was worried about chemistry and all that stuff but we just you know we just clicked and and i'm a father uh i'm a single dad um, I, you know, I have a daughter of my own, a son and a daughter. Uh, so it was easy for me, uh, being able to, to relate to that character, but Paulina, we didn't know she was like a big unknown, but man, she just knocked it out of the park. <laughs> she seems to be knocking it out of the park period. Um, yeah. <laughs> in the second season too, um, she is probably my favorite character and I just got to give, uh, give you, uh, uh, information is I used to uh, teach, um, a, one of the writers on the show, uh, and also no Dallas Goldtooth, but, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have you guess who one of the writers is. He swears a lot and uh, we've had to mute him out a couple times on our show. <laughs> I think you know who we're talking that about. That would be Bobby. Yep. Yeah, Bobby. <laughs> we love Bobby. Um, and then, uh, the show, he just, uh, wrote, uh, the last one. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, we 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 uh, could go on and on about reservation dogs, but I want I want to talk about you and and how you prepare for a role. I mean, this is you know I think your your part in reservation dogs, for instance, is so low key and it's so yeah. um, reminds me of many elders I know that don't say much, but when they do, it's it's it hits you in the forehead. Yeah. Uh... Preparing for Leon, you know, it was, it was, I mean, the difficult, difficult part for me was toning it down because I'm not like that. I'm really loud and I'm always joking and so on and so forth. So Sterling was always bringing me down, you know, like I would do a scene a certain way and he's like, you know, smaller, make it smaller, not so big. Um, you know, so Sterling was always there to help me play this character. And when I finally got it, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I know, I know who he is now you know, and so most of my emotions was going to come from subtext from my face. Um, you know, you had to see what he was thinking. He's kind of your tour guide um, for what's going on. And you have to see it in his face because he's not going to say it out loud. Wow. Uh, yeah. And it really came off and um, the chemistry was definitely there. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's really, exciting and yet you know i'm 61 years old and it's almost it's kind of emotional and hard for me to talk about you and your career and reservation dogs because um you know I, as as we talked a little bit earlier we're both former high school um teachers and i had an all native homeroom and i always thank the lieutenant governor here in minnesota for being who she is and our other politicians and leaders um for being someone that our students and our, our kids can look at that look like them that are doing great things. So John, before I start crying and Ogma taking over the interview, I want to just uh, say that too. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's huge. Uh, these are things we didn't have as kids. Um, you know, these images, the, the only thing we had was uh, Jay Silverhills in Lone Ranger and Tonto and uh, you know, um, Will Sampson, you know, whenever he would come out in a movie and, mm -hmm. uh, that's about it right there. <laughs> right. And then just back up a little bit too in, in 95, 96, I, I think smoke signals for me still hold up 
and um, we have a Smoke Signals veteran on the show, Reservation Dogs, with you too. Oh, who's with that? Gary, Gary Farmer. Oh, Gary, yeah, my man. I was yeah. so cool. It was so cool to meet Gary to really like hang out with him, and he's such a nice guy. He's funny. He's very, very funny. <laughs> And he's a great musician too. I just yeah. saw him up uh, yeah. jamming uh, up north here with a lot of people, and met a couple other uh, 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 reservation dogs people. But um, so you've been acting. Uh, you've been in forty three films. That tell me about that journey. When did you start start that? Oh my god, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I was sneaking on to movies here in Tucson, just, you know, sneaking on, becoming an extra or grabbing a walkie talkie and slowly, you know, melting into the crew. Uh, but it was something I'd always wanted to do. I was fascinated by movies and, you know, I I had to learn somehow. So I just said, I'm going to sneak on and I'll work any job I can do. I don't care what it is. You know, I'll, I'll shovel horse manure. I'll, I'll, you know, stand guard at a post where nobody comes. Doesn't matter as long as I was going to learn something. But yeah, it started way back in 1989. Yeah. And uh, is that some advice? And I think that's good advice. If that's your advice to somebody that wants to get involved in films is is be there available. And I know yeah. I've had former students that are musicians and one of them's been all over the world as a drummer and he's not the greatest drummer, but he's there. He's yeah. consistent. He's on time. All those things that, uh, that means a lot. Make, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that journey with you. Oh, um, you know, I knew that my ability was always going to be able to be questioned, but the one thing they could never question was my enthusiasm. Uh, cause I knew that I had great enthusiasm. I was there. I was ready to work. I would do anything. You could throw anything at me and I was ready to go. Uh, was I the best? Probably not. <laughs> Were there better? Sure. Are there better? Yeah. But I show up to play and, you know, I'm devoted to my craft and whatever it takes to get it done. Right on. Hey, can you stay with us for another segment? Uh, we're, uh, this is Native Roots Radio presents the Year of the Dog, and we're here with John Proud Star, and we'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. I heard sex trafficking happens a lot in Indian country. What is that? Here are some of the real reasons why sex trafficking happens in Indian country. Unequal gender roles that were forced on us by colonization. Communities don't have enough resources. Silence around domestic and sexual violence. Lack of attention and justice for missing and murdered indigenous people. There's a lot of behavior that keeps our communities out of balance. These are just a few true reasons why native communities are targeted by traffickers. When these acts of violence happen in our communities, it opens us all up for exploitation. Sponsored by the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. Hey, Ogama, I've been hearing a lot about this term, climate justice. What is that? Climate justice is recognizing that the negative impacts of climate change don't affect all people equally. It also means transitioning from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more sustainable future. MN350 is one of the groups that's pushing for this transition to protect our futures. You can even get involved, too. That's great, especially since I'm concerned about pipeline projects like Line 3. How can I help MN350? Just find them on Facebook or visit mn350.org. Ramsey County's Transforming Systems Together initiative is rethinking how the county delivers services and invests in the community, including through grants. Grants are available to support individuals and organizations providing prevention services and serving vulnerable youth involved in child protection and foster care. To learn more and see if you or your organization qualifies, visit ramseycounty.us slash TST grants. Applications are due by September 30th. Minnesotans age 65 plus might qualify for Health Partners Minnesota Senior Health Options. The plan includes personal support, coverage for medical prescription drugs and dental, plus over 30 extra benefits. Eligibility information is available at healthpartners.com slash one plan. Health Partners is a health plan that contracts with both Medicare and the Minnesota Medical Assistance Medicaid program to provide benefits of both programs to enrollees. Enrollment in Health Partners depends on contract renewal. Hi, this is Representative Sharice Davids from Kansas. I'm Ho-Chunk, and you're listening to Native Roots Radio. And we're back to Native Roots Radio presents. I'm awake, and this is Robert Pilot. 
Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're, this is Native Roots Radio, and we're presenting the Year of the Dog. Uh, we're doing a little different today, and we're going to be doing Rock to Vote Native Style uh, early next week or this week, uh, later on this week, I should say. And we're with uh, John Proudstar, and we we're talking a little bit about reservation dogs. And I want a little switch gears and talk about this movie that's coming up, uh, the Year of the Dog, and. Tell us the whole process. Uh, your your agent got you to, you know, try out for this movie, and you read the script. What's what's the process? And tell us a little bit about that, and we'll get into the movie too. Um, well, yeah, I, I'm really careful about what I do um, because there's a lot of stuff out there that you know takes advantage of native actors, and they're still using us in the same way. They just color it differently. And when you see the final product, you're kind of like, oh, my God, I'm, you know, we call them leather and feather films and they're just using us like furniture or decoration. You know, uh, they're not it's not really anything that I think uh, advances our people. So when I see something that has heart or humanity or shows us in a good light or a different light that we've never been shown and especially uh, contemporary, I'm very attracted to that, you know. And if I can be an example, you know, especially to native dads or grandfathers or native males in general, if there's something in there about the script and the story that has that kind of value, I really, you know, that's what really interests me about a project. Tell us a little bit about the story, if you would. Uh, I know we have, uh, I, I, you want to tell some, but you don't want to give everything yeah. away. I think it, you know, I want to be careful because I did look at it and I don't want to start blabbing about it. <laughs> well, what, I, what I like about stories like this one, it's it's about imperfect people. And it's, I'm trying not to give out too, <laughs> too much away, but, you know, the guy is struggling. The lead character is struggling and he runs into other individuals that have gone through that and have put their lives back together and know the process of putting your life back together and what it actually takes, the commitment. Uh, and they're, they're catching him on all his BS because he's doing everything from the hand, you know, the addict's handbook of not taking responsibility. So, you know, he's got these kind of guardian angels looking over him, you know, slowly nudging him towards that eventuality of what he has to do and what he has to face up to. And, and in life, you know, that's hard. That's hard to do it by yourself alone, you know. And if you're lucky enough to have these people, these mentors show up in your life. Um, and, and the story is, you know, about redemption. And it's uh, this tale about this guy who finds this dog. And, uh, you know, the dog is amazing. <laughs> He's a well-trained dog. And uh, it's always fun working well, with animals. I was going to say there's a couple rules. Don't work with children. So you already checked that off with reservation dogs and don't work with animals and you're done both. So there's, there's got to be a skill and a patience with that. Uh, are they yeah. not worried about getting uh, the scene steal? Stores? Yeah. Try, uh, try working with a Turkey. You know, when we did reservation dogs and had that Turkey on set. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> right so so the dog is is a, is a healing uh, portion of this and i know uh for our nation and up here in the woodlands of uh of the midwest here uh we have chiefs named after dogs and they're sacred and so how how did that fit with with you and your approach to um your um your part well, I mean, I had raised dogs all my life, so I understood I understood that part of it. And, you know, children and pets, you know, they require full attention when you're around them. And if they don't get it, they're going to bother you. They're going to they're going to push for that. Like, hey, look at me. Pay attention to me. Uh, so that was, you know, that's definitely a part of that healing process is you have to be present. You have to be in that moment. And if you're not Trust me, kids and pets will let you know. I've got grandchildren. If if I'm not 100% focused or if I look at my phone and my granddaughter's like, you know, get off your cell phone. <laughs> uh, so that's, you know, that was a part of it that I really liked. Uh, Ogama, do you have a question uh, for John at all? I know, I know uh, Ogama's here biting at the chomp, or chomping at the bit here. Go ahead, Ogama. You know, I you kind of asked a lot of the questions that I was going to ask, but 
Um, you know, I'm a little bit curious about your history, uh, John. How did you come into acting? Uh, it, like I said, it was something I'd always dreamt of doing ever since my grandmother told me that it was actually a job, you know, because when I was a little kid watching TV, I thought it was real. And she had to explain to me that, no, that's a job. Like, you know, when your parents go to work or when you go outside to play, that's what they're doing. And I was like, going outside to play all day. I want to be a part of that. <laughs> uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't very good in the beginning. You know, I wasn't very well trained and I thought I would just walk into Hollywood and, uh, you know, take it by storm. Uh, and that wasn't the case. I went there and just flopped my first audition for an agent. And it took them about 35, 40 minutes, these four female agents to tell me just how bad I was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know they walked me out of the office and i was like i was toast man and she told me this is gonna make you or break you and uh i took it serious and i i started reading i took classes uh i just i became a student and uh started getting into the craft so what oh. advice would you have for anybody uh, a native young native person looking to break into that the same way that you did? Uh, you, you have to study and you're always going to have excuses. I don't have enough money. I'm not in Hollywood. There's no acting teachers here in Tucson or wherever you live. Uh, but there's YouTube. Uh, I mean, before I had acting teachers, I would just copy scenes from movies and then do it the way that I thought I would do if I was cast in that role. Uh, excuses are always plentiful. So don't get mired. Don't get caught up in your excuses. Everyone's got excuses. Some people have it worse than you do. Some people have it better than you do. But at the end of the day, it's either going to be you or somebody else that gets that role. And to be a part of that, you have to show up. And when you show up, it's not just showing up. It's having the ability in the moment when you do show up and they call your number, you got to show them what you've been doing, what you've been working on. Yeah, and we talked a little bit, too, on how important it is to be on time. And I, I think there's an old adage, at least. I, I'm in recovery, too, so this story really kind of hits home with me. I've been sober for 37 years, and, and there's a term to uh, suit up and show up. And I think um, that's that's what you've been doing, John, for, well, 40-some 40, 40 films, for sure. And prior to that, to get your name out there as a... Uh, as you know, someone that they can depend on, not only be a good actor. But, yeah. You know. No, I, I got yelled at once by a casting director because I showed up late. It was on a movie called Young Guns 2. And I showed up late and there was an accident along the way into the studio where we were filming. And that was my excuse. And when I told him, I thought, okay, I'm in the clear. And no, he, he really yelled at me and just told me, uh, he goes, I want to tell you something somebody told me a long time ago. Excuses don't make movies. And if you were here an hour earlier, you would have missed that accident. And, you know, he was right. There was nothing I could say. I was like, man, this guy got me. So mm -hmm. from that time forward, I was on time. I was an hour early, two hours early. I was there before everyone else. Yeah. Wow. That's some really good advice for anyone and especially our, our young ones, because I, I don't appreciate the term Indian time. I think yeah. it's. I, I don't like that term. That's to say that it's fun and funny, but yeah, things like this, um, your job and, and things like that and showing up, uh, there's no Indian time. You need to show up to colonizer time or whatever, but you got to be there on time. You know, I think it'd be good to take back that term though, you know, make Indian time, meaning you're the first one to be there. You're the first one That's to right. show up and you work harder. Like that, that would be, we could take back Indian uh, time that way. I like the idea oh of that. <laughs> oh my, yeah, I like that. We I could like uh, make t-shirts and have your face on that and oh, uh, what? <laughs> you know how yes, just, just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would that would be really modest, right? Or uh, yeah. what? What is that? Uh, you know, the other question that I have too would be like, what role did you play, or what film or um, role did you do that you really felt like you were like coming into it? Like you've done forty three movies, so like, which one did you finally feel like? I think I'm getting this. Yeah, how many movies in was that? Uh. Yeah, it had to be Dude Vision, a movie, a short film that I did. I directed myself. 
I wrote it and I shot it here in Tucson with the help of many, many talented people here in Tucson, but it was a comedy and it was a short comedy. And, um, I was just in heaven because I worship actors like John Ritter and Peter Sellers and Gene Wilder. Uh, and I'd always wanted to be funny and Hollywood for some reason doesn't want natives to be funny. So here I was, I got to be funny and I just, I really felt that, okay, I'm doing something here. I'm making people laugh and there's no other feeling in the world, uh, having people watch your stuff and laugh at your comedy, you know? And, uh, yeah, that was, that was probably one of my proudest moments. John, we haven't talked enough about the movie. Can you come back on for a, we got a hard break here and yeah, yeah, yeah. come back and talk about the movie and where we, people can see it. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're making my job really early, easy here being on these three segments. So I, I really, really appreciate it. You're listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents I'm Awake, and we're talking to John Proudstar in the movie The Year of the Dog and the Little Reservation Dogs thrown in there. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> Hey, Wendy, what are we doing for dinner after the show? How about we go to Jay Selby's on 169 Victoria Street in St. Paul. They have a delicious plant-based menu that's compassionate and environmentally sustainable. I'm getting their spot-on vegan Big Mac, the dirty secret. You can pick up and they deliver within a five-mile radius, or you can call them at 651-222-3263 or visit jayselby's.com. Well, you sold me one. Let's go order at Jay Selby's tonight. I'm hungry. Don't fall for vaccine misinformation. Local medical professionals are available to answer any of your questions. Initial shots and boosters are safe for people who are pregnant and even young children. Right now, vaccines are available for anyone over six months of age, while boosters are available for anyone over the age of five. This message brought to you by the Native American Community Clinic. Find a vaccination site by calling 651-304-9986 or visit vaccineconnector.mn.gov. Hi, Minnesota. This is David Pakman. You can hear my show every weekday at two, right after Tom Hartman on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Seward Co-op is now offering convenient self-serve and prepackaged hot options and salad bars at both the Franklin and Friendship stores. Breakfast items available daily until 11 a.m. and brunch served all day every Sunday. Their weekly lunch and dinner menus highlight cuisines from around the world. They offer vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free options daily. 95% of the ingredients used are organic from small-scale, local community food producers whenever possible. More at Seward.coop. Electricity costs have hit historic highs, and they're likely to continue rising with no end in sight. If you own a business, those are costs that are eating away at your bottom line. But switching to All Energy Solar can help you see green instead of red. A system from All Energy Solar offers a bankable investment with energy costs that won't rise along with fossil fuel. So stop renting your energy from the utility company because the rent keeps going up. Solar tax incentives are strong, returning up to 60% of your investment. But those credits will decrease in 2023. And with more businesses switching to solar, capacity is limited. That's why reserving your spot on the grid now has never been more critical. All Energy Solar has the experience of installing over 6,000 systems for all sorts of properties in the Midwest and beyond. Get a free no-obligation assessment from All Energy Solar's commercial solar specialists today by calling 800-620-3370 or visiting allenergysolar.com. Register at AUSM.org for the Autistic Community Summit, created and curated by people with autism for people with autism. People like me. This is Zephyr James, Community Engagement Manager at the Autism Society of Minnesota, inviting you to experience our Autistic Community Summit on Saturday, September 17th. Register at AUSM.org. The Autistic Community Summit centers autistics and allows them to share what they've learned, overcome, and continue to persevere through in their lived experience. Our summit celebrates neurodiversity, and all of our speakers are autistic. Through this presentation process, 
Awesome intends to further build leaders and advocates throughout Minnesota's diverse autistic community. In-person attendance has sold out, but virtual tickets are virtually unlimited. So host your own watch party during the Autistic Community Summit by registering at AUSM.org. That's AUSM.org. With your AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for partly cloudy skies tonight with a low around 58, Wednesday partly sunny with a high near 81, and Thursday partly sunny with a high around 85. Crooner's Supper Club is a little piece of old school nightlife in the 21st century. And before or after your show, check out the new Maggie's Lounge, a perfect spot to visit with friends. It's open Wednesdays through Sundays, 4.30 to 11 for cocktails and light fare. And you don't even need a ticket to enjoy the great atmosphere of Maggie's or at croonersmn.com. Welcome back to Native Roots Radio Presents. I'm awake and this is Robert Pilot. Hey, we're doing uh, Native Roots Radio Presents The Year of the Dog, and we're talking to uh, John Proud, star, uh, actor of over 40 films, and you probably know him from uh, Willie Jack's father on Reservation Dogs. Uh, I, I, let's uh, get to right now, uh, if you don't mind, John, how people can see this movie and, um, and tell us a little bit more about that, if you would. Uh, well, they're currently in festival route right now, so it's going to be there for a little bit, for a couple of months, and then after that, they'll probably start seeking distribution. I'm not quite sure what distribution entities they're talking to at this point, so it's just kind of a waiting game. Well, and it's important, too, uh, like Ogama has up here, uh, there's social media. If, if you yeah. want to give a shout-out, Ogama, where everyone can... can can lock in on the movie and find out more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in seeing this upcoming film, uh, The Year of the Dog, starring John Proudstar as the uh, character Greg, you can go to their website directly. It's theyearofthedogmovie.com, or you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook at The Year of the Dog Movie, or follow them on Twitter at Year of Dog Movie. So all over social media, all over online, you can uh, follow what's happening where they're at in route for festivals um, and then uh, be the first one to you know get a, uh, a peek at it when it goes on to distribution um, I believe and if I'm not mistaken they're um, looking to um, go through an independent spirit award is that right is that what I understand yeah, Michael, Michael Spears and myself are being recommended for uh, Independent Spirit Award nomination. So that kind of blew my mind when they called and told me that. I was like, that was pretty neat. Yeah, it. you know, I feel like, and I, you can correct me if, John, because you're on a, a such a, a different track than per se me, but... I feel like a lot of things have happened in a good way since Standing Rock. And, um, uh, you know, we have these TV shows. We had Rutherford Falls. We had many people on with Rutherford Falls. And a lot of people worked on both Reservation Dogs and Rutherford Falls at the same time. Yeah. You know, we had Dark Winds. We have uh, the the loss of uh, that Washington football, uh, football team. Just a lot of... A lot of things have changed since uh, Standing Rock. What's your feeling on that? Well, I think everything's finally come to roost. We've, uh, we're a great country and we push out a great message, but it's this younger generation that's holding it to account saying, are we really what we report to be? Are we really doing the things that we tell the rest of the world that uh, we report to do? And when you look inward, we're not, not completely. So that's not completely 100% honest until we're doing that for the indigenous population of this country. Um, there's a lot of things that happen to us, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of things currently happening to us that is not right and it needs to be corrected. And until that can be corrected, we can't go out to the rest of the world 
and point a finger at them saying, oh, look at what you're doing to those people uh, because we're not taking care of our own. So I, I think that's a huge part of it. Wow, that's great. And, you know, I, I'm i 61, so when I was a junior in high school, we were able to pray in our own way as Native Americans. So just to put that in perspective with all our uh, our, our white allies that are listening to this show across Turtle Island, um, we're all over the country here. And um, just to, you know, to be proud of who we are. And then this next, this current generation, John, um, really is progressive they don't see they know they think love is love it, it's it's been just for me and i think you were touching a little bit on that uh, just refreshing to see what's coming behind us in the next generation yeah it is i mean it's it's uh it's a journey you know because it's so new to us to us older people we're trying to get a grasp on it because it is such a foreign concept to us, uh, the new way of thinking, uh, you know, but that goes back to our old ways. You know, we never chastise homosexuality within the tribes uh, that, that was never looked down upon. Um, and somewhere along the line that changed. Uh, so it's it's refreshing to see that old way come back. That's a part of who we were. We were very accepting of the two spirits. Um, so, you know, when I see things like that, I, it gives me hope. Yeah, definitely. We talk about, uh, when we were being colonized here many times on the show that our two spirit relatives were the first along with medicine and to be murdered by the colonizers and oh yeah, that isn't how we think. So it's, it's great that our young ones know this and, yeah. and see this and that, like you said, we, we are relearning this too. Yeah, no, it's it's so important and coming from education and I've worked with survivors of child molestation for over 34 years of my life. And I'm currently developing a comic book called Tribal Force. It's the first all native superhero comic book in the history of the United States. Uh, we were inducted into the Smithsonian Institute for being the first one. But those are the things that I'm hoping uh, to include in the in the comic book. You know, these little lessons of the way that our people used to be and uh you know hopefully it'll catch hopefully it'll stick in the brain yeah yeah definitely and i yeah i i guess part of me being native is is the young ones coming behind us and that they're they're learning the language they're they're grasping things that we didn't have the opportunity to you know we yeah. lost a couple generations john with the boarding schools and not being cool you know, when we, we uh, one of my regular guests, we kind of laugh all the time is that uh, in 1978, we found out who was really native and not Italian or Mexican or whatever, because <laughs> it's like, wow, hey, you're native too. What 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 the heck? But that's a, that's a circle back uh, on the movie. And I know your time's really valuable and I, I, I want to let you go and be respectful for that. But I've been totally enjoying uh, hanging out with you and this is kind of how the show goes is a kind of a laid back kind of couch conversation um yeah. and it's in and, and i've been really happy to have you on for many reasons but uh let's let's talk a little bit uh about the movie and where it's coming out and then uh, and then uh Ogma, you can give the the websites again if you don't mind well, currently, I'm I'm not aware of where it's going to be. I don't know what uh, festivals that they've entered, um, but uh, I I got to see it and I was blown away. The performances in there are amazing. You know, Michael Spears does such a great job. Rob Grippo, uh, who plays the lead character, just amazing. Like he draws you in. He's a very unusual guy, a very unusual character, and from the get go, you know, he catches you. And you're, you're just drawn in following this guy down this path and this destructive path that he's living. And, you know, it shows you why he's doing what he's doing. And you can see that he's in a lot of pain. And you're hoping that these characters, you know, Michael's character and my character, uh, when we come into his life, we slowly have an effect on him. Uh, it's difficult to talk about because I, <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. Right. It's, it's so good that, you know, you don't want any uh, spoilers or anything like that. But it, it's 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 heartwarming. 
uh, it's hard at some point, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because some of the subject matter is difficult. Um, but it's inspiring, if anything. Wow. And, uh, you know, Ogama, let everybody know how to stay current on what's going on with with uh, the year of the dog. And um, I just uh, appreciate so much, uh, John Proudstar, for uh, you being on our show today. Oh, thank you. No, it was great. Great talking to you guys. Yes. Yeah, so for those of you listening who are interested in following the Year of the Dog, they're going to be going through the festival circuit uh, starting in October and hopefully be released nationwide this winter. You can find out more at the Year of the Dog movie.com or you can follow uh, the Year of the Dog on Facebook and Twitter. And then on Instagram, it's Year of Dog movie on Instagram. And I just want to uplift too. Um, Mr. Proudstar had four other big releases in 2021 the heart stays wastelander deep woods and mammoth so make sure you're checking around to find out where you can uh stream or rent or um watch all of those and uh give lots of support to our relatives who are out um doing this work doing this acting and bringing our um respectful bringing respectful roles to the native community it's an important job that you're doing john and mcwitch thank you so much for joining us today uh, thank you thank you so much and it's always uh, important john and ogama to have a real native play a native so uh uh kudos to everybody that hires you too i think uh, that has to be said too john yeah it's it's the time has come you know man we've waited a long time so glad i made it to this point <laughs> Because, you know, after a while, you're like, I thought I'm 55. So I was like, well, I guess it's not going to happen. <laughs> and then Reservation Dog shows up. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for being on. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it means a lot to us. And I know we've had a lot of comments here on YouTube and Facebook uh, that are really excited that you were on our show and, and spent some time with us. Again, Peeny Gigi for being on. Uh, the Year of the Dog, we're with John Proudstar. Peenie again, John. All right, thank you. All right. Hey, you're listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents. I'm awake. And up next, we're going to talk a little news with Okama. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> Hey, Olgama, I've been hearing a lot about this term, climate justice. What is that? Climate justice is recognizing that the negative impacts of climate change don't affect all people equally. It also means transitioning from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more sustainable future. MN350 is one of the groups that's pushing for this transition to protect our futures. You can even get involved, too. That's great, especially since I'm concerned about pipeline projects like Line 3. How can I help MN350? Just find them on Facebook or visit MN350.org. Minnesota has the only original wolf population in the continental United States, and 80% of Minnesotans believe the wolf should be protected. Howling for Wolves is asking Minnesotans to respect our true wildlife manager, the wolf. Their survival is critical to our ecosystems, our communities, and even our economy. As highly intelligent animals with strong social bonds, Minnesota wolves deserve to be protected and admired. Learn more at howlingforwolves.org. Let's live and let howl. JNS Bean Factory is a native owned, community supported, cozy, artsy coffee shop which offers roasted on site beans, live music, and baked goods. Relax in the beautiful outside patio. City Pages writes, voted top 10 coffee shops. Tucked into a quiet corner of St. Paul's Highland Park neighborhood, this coffee shop roasts beans on site from the best coffee growing countries in the world. Located at 1518 Randolph Avenue, St. Paul. The good stuff. Ramsey County's Transforming Systems Together initiative is rethinking how the county delivers services and invests in the community, including through grants. Grants are available to support individuals and organizations providing prevention services and serving vulnerable youth involved in child protection and foster care. To learn more and see if you or your organization qualifies, visit RamseyCounty.us slash TST grants. Applications are due by September 30th. You're listening to Native Roots Radio. This is Spirit from Reservation Dogs. Get up and listen. Uh -huh! 
Welcome back to Native Ritz Radio Presents. I'm awake and this is Robert Pilot. Hey, this portion is brought to you by Hauling for Wolves. Uh, Protecting wolves you know, for future generations. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey, you were howling, howl, howling alone yesterday. So, I was just uh, going to say, anybody who tuned in yesterday, I had to howl alone. <laughs> yesterday, I think it was the loneliest wolf howl I've ever heard. Um, no. So that was that was, <laughs> that was the thing that yeah. happened yesterday. Um, Buju, Anin, everybody. I'm Ogama Ganuikwe, and I have some news for you here on Native Roots Radio. I want to kind of start close to home today. By close to home, I mean close to uh, here in Minnesota and also close to my heart because I am currently an indigenous mother who is nursing or breastfeeding a child. So if you are nearby, you can go to Bemidji, Minnesota on September 27th, 2022 for the Indigenous Breastfeeding Coalition of Minnesota in-person gathering. They're going to be talking about the mission and goals and learn about the new First Food Toolkit and see educational activities that you can do in your community. Lunch and breakfast are going to be provided at this event. Again, that's in Bemidji, Minnesota. September 27th is the Indigenous Breastfeeding Coalition of Minnesota's in-person gathering from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. RSVP, if you can, by the 16th, which is this week. If you need information, email to Kayla Lightfield at tlightfield at diw-mn.org and they can give you some more information. Really exciting event, and I know that this coalition has done a lot to put up um, safe places for mothers like myself to nurse um, at powwows and other events. They offer a lot of support and um, help for mothers who um, are really uh, wanting to give their child that best first medicine, that first food, which is um, mom's milk. So that is an important event that's happening locally. And then I also want to follow up on an, a bit of a thing that happened, I guess, um, uh, in 2021, I believe, during the um, actions to slow and stop Line 3, the Hubbard County Sheriff in Minnesota unlawfully blockaded access to a camp that was serving as a convergence space um, and home for an Indigenous-led organizing decolonization and treaty rights trainings, as well as religious activities. Water protectors uh, were seeking to defend the untouched wetlands, wetlands and treaty territory of Anishinaabe peoples here in Minnesota, and activists attempting to access that property were harassed and blockaded from entering by the Hubbard County Police, issued unlawful citations for driving upon the property's driveway, and threatened with arrest for coming to and from the camp. I believe that those um, Hubbard County Police also refused to let Indigenous activists to leave the um, property as well. Um, the sheriff's departments in that region had received funds from the Enbridge Pipeline Corporation for their time spent um, acting against the pipeline's opponents, which was known as the Public Safety Escrow Fund. Enbridge has paid more than $8 million to reimburse law enforcement in Minnesota. Basically, this privatized Minnesota's public police forces to um, service efforts to repress opposition to the Line 3 pipeline. Uh, many water protectors were hurt or uh, traumatized uh, during the actions to try to um, delay or stop Line 3 and to protect water and uh, Anishinaabe territory here in Minnesota. So that's just a little bit of history here. Um, the Center for Protest Law and Litigation actually had a victory uh, just this week. A Minnesota court issued that a ruling um, protect the indigenous-led camp of Line 3 opponents from Hubbard County's unlawful blockades and targeted harassment. So it was ruled that they were unlawful in blockading and targeting those water protectors as um oppressive police tactics. Um, the ruling has come after months of litigation on behalf of water protectors, including Tara Hauska and Winona LeDuc, and finally a successful temporary restraining order against the uh, Hubbard County Sheriff Corey Ox and the local land commissioner in northern Minnesota. So that was uh, blocking access to GNU Collective's Line 3 Camp in Maywag in 2021. So we're glad to see that that has um, come up and been 
um, ruled against as unlawful as it was. Also in Minnesota, uh, Saturday, September 17th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. is the uh, ICHO, the uh, American Indian Community Housing Organization up in Duluth. It is their seventh annual food and art market, again, Saturday, September 17th in Duluth. They will be there from 11 to 2 p.m. at Central Hillside Community Center parking lot at 12 East 4th Street in Duluth. And there will be 21 local indigenous and BIPOC entrepreneurs who will be selling garden-grown produce, pro, uh, frozen farm-raised meats, uh, wild rice, jewelry, beadwork, uh, fine arts, pretty much anything you could ask for, uh, all Native made happening at this event uh, up in Duluth. Uh, over in North Dakota, I just want to uplift what's happening at the MHA Nation. The MHA Nation Chairman Fox has had to once again condemn North Dakota's efforts to assert title of the Mississippi. Missouri Riverbed. So the uh, Mandan Hidatsa and Arikara Nation, also known as the MHA Nation or Three Affiliated Tribes, um, had to again strongly condemn a recent effort by the state of North Dakota to undermine their lawful rights. In a letter on August uh, 24, 2022, a letter to an energy company was written by North Dakota Solicitor General Matthew uh, Sagsveen, and it asserted that North Dakota owns the Missouri Riverbed inside the boundaries of the four Fort Berthold Reservation, where the MHA Nation resides, and that is actually contrary to legal and historical record. Um, so, uh, Chairman Fox issued a statement that the Missouri River and the minerals minerals below it on the Fort Berthold Reservation are the rightful property of the MHA Nation, and the state of North Dakota continues to sh show their lack of respect for the le legal precedences and the people who have paid with their lives to preserve these fragments of our ancestral lands and waters, and that they reject the attempt to undermine those lawful rights of the MHA nation, which is really important uh, that all of our tribal people who have a say to stand up to those uh, powers that be continue to do so. I also want to uplift uh, a relative named Noel Lynn Smith. Noel has been selected to participate in a new graduate partnership between Arizona State University's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication and the Native American Journalists Association and ICT, which was formerly Indian Country Today. So she has been granted a fellowship um, that will provide support for Noel to complete a Cronkite master's degree while producing journalism with colleagues at ICT. Um, so that is wonderful. Um, Smith is a Diné journalist um, and she will will pursue a master's of arts in investigative journalism. So congratulations, Noelle Lynn Smith, uh, for your uh, Cronkite ICP fellowship um, and being the first student to do that. Um, I want to put a little applause in there. Okay. Oh, applause. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I'm hearing sounds. What are those sounds? <laughs> <laughs> in national news, uh, the National Congress of American Indians has named a uh, former tribal chairman of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska, Mr. Larry Wright Jr., as its new executive director. Um, he's going to manage day-to-day -day oper operations of the organization and create a pathway for long-term success for NCAI and the NCAI fund. Um, so that is very exciting um, that they will have a new um director that's um national congress of american indians does a lot of really great work and if you're not getting their newsletter it's a really great thing to sign up for if you are um looking to keep up to date with uh, some of the things that are happening in indian country and then over in billings montana uh, sad news for a uh, tribe over there. The uh, There was a federal judge on Friday that has ordered the Biden administration to reinstate a drilling lease um, on land near the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. The land is considered sacred in the U.S. and Canada, and there's a 10 square mile oil and gas lease in the Badger Two Medicine area of northwestern Montana that was issued in 1982, and it had been previously canceled in 2016 at the request of the tribes and conservation groups for that area. Um, but unfortunately, that tribe or that um, 
oil and gas lease has been reinstated despite efforts to declare the area a national monument or make it a cultural heritage area. Um, most of the tribal people in the area, it appears, are opposed to that. And um, unfortunately, that is back in place. So um, really, really sad to see those kinds of things are happening here in Indian country with uh, oil and gas uh, once again, right, Robert? Yeah, definitely. Hey, we're wrapping it up here, Peeny Gigi Ogama, for everything you do in the news. Um, you know, I just got to give a quick shout out to there's still uh, on the way free uh, Leonard Peltier. It was his birthday yesterday, uh, and they're still marching, and we're going to get an update this week. If, if you're listening to the show, you are part of the resistance from Chief Plenty Coops, the ground on which we stand on is sacred ground. It is the blood of our ancestors. We need to resist, divest. Join a group and run for office. Pinigigi to our guest today, John, um, you know, and it was a great show, and I really appreciate John stopping in. John, proud star. We'll be back tomorrow. Nightingale is your cozy, comfortable neighborhood restaurant in the Whittier